Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar Today. We're here with Tim Fitzgerald, who's going to tell us about his new project. You're, you're doing, you're doing, oh, you did a West thing. You're doing a West thing. You're just releasing a West yeah. thing. And I'm, I want you to talk about that. But be, before I do, sure. you, you've been on the Chicago scene a long time. Yeah, it's good. It's funny how fast it goes. But yeah, it's been yeah, a you, couple of decades now. And, um, and, just just to let you know, I, I I was listening to you play. I was watching a bunch of YouTube's and all that kind of stuff. You're playing a 175. Yep. Which is, I think, it's pretty <laughs> pretty cool. I think it's, pretty, it's really, really pretty oh. cool. I, and those are some pretty thick. I, there's at least 12s, aren't they? 13s. And 13s. I, you know, I'm a person who's kind of slow to change. So yeah. I was 14s for forever, and I had the idea that I should go to 13s, and it took me about five years. <laughs> to, to decide to go to you, like one string at a time <laughs> no i actually didn't. I just, I had oh, to think okay about i'm it. gonna play a 13 on a 14 set for <laughs> one year and then i'm gonna add the b string next year it took oh, a while no you, you know you don't you don't spend a lot of money on strings that way you know you can you know six years to set aside strings it's great well i was just staying so much it's just so hard because like, you get used to something and i want like even that guitar I bought it in, it's a 1981, which mm -hmm. is kind of a quirky year, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah, got it some, is. but it's, I, I bought it in 91 and it's been my main act since then. So that's, I mean, how many decades is that? Well, the two things that jumped out at me, and then I want you to talk about your, your, your record. Um, oh, sure. The two things that jumped out at me is one is your connection um, to your instrument, mm. which, which is really obvious. And, and also, you know, I don't use this word too often, but you have complete command over that thing. You, you, you really wow. do. Yeah, you've got complete command over it. And I, and I, I don't say that. I mean, that's, that's not a word that, that comes out of wow. my mouth very often when I talk about. But man, you, you have got that thing down. And I'll, I'll tell you, in your playing, the only guy that I've heard that makes the drummer crazy because he's really driving the, he's, with your single note playing, you're driving the rhythm you're probably driving your drummer nuts because the only <laughs> that's great the only other guy that is on top of the beat ever that i've ever heard play like 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 what i've witnessed you play is the great pat martino oh my gosh now have you I ever did. saw pat play live i he did used, yeah he, he used a 412 cabinet and so <laughs> and i asked him about <laughs> that and i said well, I said, excuse my expression, Pat, what the F are you doing with a four? We're a, we're a 40 seat room. He's got, I can't remember the, the top he was using, like a Clara. It was one of one of the tops, you know, the solid state top this yeah. big on top of this 412 can. Mm -hmm. And man, I mean, it was like he had, he was like every, every note he played was like a kick drum with pitch. I mean, it was boom, boom, yeah. boom, yeah. boom. And, um, and you're, you're so far on top of, on top of the beat. You know when you're playing, and in a good way. I mean, it's it just you yeah. just you just command it, Zach. You got to be quiet, buddy. You just command it. So, um, so I'm I'm a fan. I I, I like what you're doing. I, I really like what you're doing. That being said, tell us about well, your, tell us about your new project. Oh my gosh. Well, there's first of all, just thank you. There's that's some of the nice. That's just really thoughtful and considerate. I really appreciate what you said. I'm kind of, I'm humbled to be even shouldn't be mentioned with those masters. I actually heard, um, I remember hearing Pat at the, um, it was his comeback, and I knew it was a special, one of the comeback shows of the weekend at the um, bottom, bottom line in New York, and I knew it was a special night when I looked to the bar and I saw Mr. George Benson, and I know if he's there, who's one of, you know, absolutely one of my all-time heroes and inspirations, to see them both, to be Thank just you. both in their presence in the same room was, was really incredible. I, you know, I, and I, on the record, you mentioned the drums. Uh, it's, it's George Flutus is on the record. He's a he's a, really a wonderful drummer. You, you probably know him, but in case you don't, he did years with uh, with Ray Brown. He's in the he's, he's always been based in Chicago, but he managed uh, to to play with Cedar Walton and, and on and on. Just like like an incredible list of. And he was the regular guy for Ray. Mm -hmm. When I heard Ray Brown do a, a clinic uh, here in Chicago, he said a, a lot of things that are very memorable, including, "I get paid to rush." And I was like, yes, that's it. <laughs> it's amazing. And Ray, it's just, it, it's, it's perfect. Where he puts it is perfect. And where George puts it is perfect. And mm -hmm. I just try and, I try and ride the wave of what, of what they're putting forward. And the, it's, and the, yes. Yeah, the crust of oh. it, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, and that, that is the danger of getting too far in front. It, uh, it's been known to happen, <laughs> but 
<laughs> you know, but I didn't hear it. And what it, what and it's very exciting for the listener. I mean, you know, it's very exciting for the listener to hear it because you know, excuse my expression, but your ass is hanging out there. <laughs> you know, you. I mean, yeah. it, you know, it is. And when you play like that, I mean, you know, you're you're exposing yourself. Like, if you hang behind the beat, you know, I, listen, I love guys that hang behind the beat too. You know, it's it's all it's just a different thing, you know. Yeah. And 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 especially in you know blues, of course, you know. But um, but when you're when you're riding that crest, you know, yeah. and you're like you're like falling over the the crest of the wave, and the, and then the wave comes like right after you, man. And, you know, you're. <laughs> You're you're yeah. hanging out there, you know. We're you're out there. Out. I mean, yeah, it is something. You know, it's funny that uh, my my dear friend and mentor Randy Jones says um, when it comes to uh, he says what, what, I want to get this right. He says when boats are uh, boats are safe in a harbor, mm -hmm. but, but but boats are meant to sail the seas. Something like that. Forgive me if I, yeah. I, I no, that's make I, it no. and and I feel that because it, it is. It, it can be scary for sure to go, especially to go for things just to go for it mm -hmm. and that you know that's one of the beauties for me of this project was getting a chance actually to go for it and you know there's there's it's tape i could do it again you yeah. know it wasn't a live recording it, 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 hey let's try it again go for it and try it again and that's one of the beauties. i was well i listened to a whole, to a whole bunch of the tracks you know because yeah. they were they were kind enough to send me you know the, the tracks was helping the track and um while you're doing tunes like four on six and all of that you know the, the west staples um, you know, you definitely, um, you know, put something different on it. You know, you didn't, you didn't mm. cover the tune. You know, that's the idea. That was the, that's the yeah. goal. Especially because, in the you know, oh, especially the phrasing of the theme. You know, the, um, oh the yeah, here. that was that was oh, pretty for cool. sure. Yeah, that was pretty well, cool. Well, yeah, it was certainly. I mean, a, a cover, a cover band of West would be fine. I don't begrudge anyone for doing mm -hmm. that. I mean, it's it's amazing music. I love to hear it. But when it's going for something a little different than that, we were really trying yeah. to use it as a as a launching point. Yeah. When it kind of, you know, I, I think I called it in, uh, at one point, I called it, it's a, it's a love letter to us. I wanted him, I would want him to hear this and love it and feel how much we love him. Mm -hmm. But also we're not interested in just, you know, imitating him. I mean, first of all, I couldn't, I can't, you know, as much as I've studied Wes very hard for many years. Yeah. And I, I can't sound like him. I mean, even if, you know, if I do all my life to it, which is, so I, I'm not even interested in that. I, of course, I, I want him in me. I want his music right. and I want to take it and, and launch somewhere else. That's the that's the ultimate goal is to use it as as, as both a love letter and also something that, that reaches forward. But, but I think that's true for a lot of musicians in general, for all of us as part of our quest. Well, you're, you know, the, the, the big catchphrase and overused a lot, but is standing on shoulders, oh, you know, yeah. not standing behind shoulders, you know, and yet right. well said, you know, you're standing on the shoulders you take them, you know, and, and uh, whether you deserve it or not, you know, where any of us deserve it or not, you know, you're standing on the shoulders and, and if, and if they weren't there, then certainly, if they weren't there to have their shoulders to stand on, you'd be down below them somewhere. But I'm making this all up as I go along, Tammy. I'm figuring oh, that God, out. No, no problem. But, um, I'm it's improvising. A... It's jazz, man. It's jazz. Um, <laughs> okay. So tell us a little bit specifically. All right. The first sure. question, first question is this, why Wes? in one minute or less. Okay, well, <laughs> it really, you know, it's funny. I, I loved Wes from, I think the first record I had was a double a double record reissue of, uh, it was uh, the incredible jazz guitar of Wes and so much mm -hmm. guitar, I was on a two record. And just from, from the needle drop, from the first needle, I just loved them so much. Right. But, you know, we, I don't know if you had this back in, this was the late, uh, well, I'm not even sure, late 80s. We're passing around videotapes, like of, of Jet, and it was a video of Wes playing on the show right. Jazz Six Two Five. You yeah. know, of course, it had been reproduced three hundred times, and it was grainy. Right. But when I saw that, it was it was done. It was over. He was already my favorite just from the record. Right. But when I saw the ease mm -hmm. and the warmth, and when he would play the baddest shit you ever seen, and smile and look over, and say, oh, you hear that? <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. And yeah. Or, or someone, or, or Harold Maber plays something good, and he looks at him and smiles. It's like, this is it. This is everything I love right. about life right there. It's just the connection and the warmth and the badassery. So, and that was, that started young for me. So that was, yeah. he was, he was big for me very young. So that, I guess that's why Wes, mm -hmm. um, uh, quite a while after that, I, I was thinking about that video, like a decade later, and it's like, oh, I, boy, it's too bad no one ever transcribed that, I thought. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, 
why don't I do it? Mm -hmm. And so I did. I spent a couple of years with that 40 minutes of tape and it became a book called uh, 625 Alive. Mm -hmm. West Montgomery, BBC Performance Transcribers. I think that's it, 625 Alive. And I put that out and um, got some nice awards. I uh, got um, uh, awarded uh, 50, 50 greatest guitar books. Uh, someone mm. gave me that, which, which I thought was wonderful in his book. And um, it was really surprising, honestly, spending all that time with Wes because a lot of his physicality surprised me. Mm -hmm. um, I had studied previously, I'd mentioned Rodney Jones. Rodney really got me on the path of Wes's physicality, like what was going on with the thumb, the downstrokes, the fingerings, the three finger technique, the two finger technique. And then one thing that really surprised me about uh, spending all that time with the video were some of the fingers. So it was like running up the B, B string or doing things that were completely inefficient or out of, you know, things right. that would, he would play a sequence, you would expect him just to play down a whole step, but instead he would shift, even, the, even if the notes were sequential, he I, would shift the positions. I, you know, I, I studied jazz guitar at Georgia State University um, as, as a um, elder statesman, as it were. And so part of, part of the curriculum was to transcribe and of course I transcribed some West tunes and what became really apparent to me quickly is that he played shit that nobody else played I mean, he, he, he he heard stuff that there it wasn't guitaristic it was you know you know how some oh, guys you, some guys you can tell they're they're playing guitar they're not playing music and I'm, I don't mean to be cruel but you know what I'm talking about oh 100 percent yeah and so his but his stuff was like Whoa, nobody does, nobody moves, nobody, I'm, well, how am I gonna, <laughs> where, 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 where's yes. that finger, where's that finger gonna go, you know, how am I gonna do exactly. that? Exactly. But that's, and, that's what made it so brilliant. And nobody, he actually talks about that in an interview. There's a, there's mm -hmm. an interview out there where he'll, he says something to the effect of, uh, I'm not a guitarist, it's just a tool. Right. I, I get it. I, I relate to that. I don't, yeah. I mean, I love, I love guitar, but it's not like I'm a guitar freak as much as I am the, the music. And the music, yeah. Yeah, well, I think so. Yeah. And, a teacher that I had um, said to me, you know, Wes just heard it and played it. You know, it wasn't, about, it wasn't about the theory, it wasn't about anything. It was just he, he heard it sound in his head and he played it. Now, you know, that's what he said. And, you know, I'm, no, I, I agree. Any, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't have any reason to, to change that. So it's, oh, I think he, you know, like the masters, he led with the sound. You right. know, and there was there was a lot of talk. It used to be like, oh, Wes doesn't know any of the, you know, you could hear Wes could tell you the chords or he could tell you those things, but he didn't. That was secondary. What's right. most important is the sound. Right. Now, for the rest of us mere mortals, it's nice to use theory as a as a stepping stone, as a tool to right. help advance our ears, you know, because right. we get your ears get to a certain point. Well, theory could help it by. But yeah, right. Wes's ear, just like George, just like Benson, just like all, all my heroes. I've been telling people for a long time that written music theory all of that and i'm going to equate it to hiking when you get the map the topo out and you can see okay well there's the creek you know there's the hill there's the this there's the that there oh and this is what we're going to you know that's a two-dimensional map of what you're going to experience yeah but look up it's not the three-dimensional it's not the, <laughs> it's not the music itself yeah. it's just the map yeah it's right on that map and, doesn't doesn't have any sounds of birds and it doesn't feel the breeze going across your face and doesn't no. have the smell of pine and i mean how many other things you're yeah. smelling you're smelling when i'm baking my friend you're smelling when I'm baking. <laughs> so let's let's because right. we, we don't have a whole lot of time oh, and i okay. want to make sure we talk about your record okay sure, sure. so so who's on the record okay uh we got it's a, it's a septet mm -hmm. so our uh we've got three horns and a little bit the, the hook of the record which i should have mentioned is that um it, for your listeners that don't know, or maybe they all know, um, Wes Montgomery, one of the things Wes Montgomery was famous for was his chord solos, his right. four note chord solos. Mm -hmm. So he would literally play four note chords, but play them in a, in a, a, a sequence, play them very quickly. Do you and have a guitar close? Do you have a guitar close by? Oh yeah, I think that my background might mess it up a little bit. But let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, does it, you, that, that's got enough output to, you don't need to plug it in. It's probably oh, got Can you? Uh, is yeah. it coming through or am I blocking plenty. it? No, no, you got plenty. So Wes might play um, these four note chords. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. <laughs> yeah, play them in a sequence. You know, uh, so what I what, so part of the project was we took these, or I took these um, these chord solos, some of Wes's most famous chord solos, and assigned one horn for each guitar, each note on the guitar. With some, you know, it took some finagling because it didn't always work exactly. We had to switch it up. 
So, and what we call those in jazz, um, I'm sure you know, but in case your listeners don't know, that's a soli, S-O-L-I. So we took Wes's solo and we all played it together. So basically arranged his guitar solos for the horns. And that, so we took and became a, uh, some of the, the soli, some of his most famous soli. So from like a West Coast Blues, Mr. Walker, Fried Pies. Mm. And so that's part of the hook of, so that we, the record has the solis, but of course it's also got arrangements of all the heads. Um, and I'll tell you about that too. And I'll, I'll, so, oh, I'm, so you had asked who's on the record. We have right. three horns. Right. Uh, Victor Garcia is a fantastic trumpet player. I get I get a gush about all these guys. I don't know yeah, if it's, if that's away. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Victor is just you got a minute or two. Go ahead. Okay, so Victor Victor's amazing, a power powerhouse musician and arranger. He arranged two of the melodies of our ten songs. I arranged seven of the melodies. Victor did two, and then Chris Madsen, who's another monster uh, musician. He's a saxophonist. He's actually a Juilliard grad, and we almost we almost lost him to New York. He was doing really well out there, but he came back, luckily for us, in Chicago. He arranged uh, Far West. And we have Greg Ward on alto, who's, uh, I don't know if you know Greg, just a beautiful player, amazing, another monster musician, uh, very free spirit, as well as like another driving force. Mm-hmm. And our rhythm section is George Flutus, who I mentioned. Uh, Tom Vaitzis on piano, who's a, 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 a real a real staple in Chicago. He feels the beat just like George does. So it's a, he's part of that wave, as is our bassist, Christian Dillingham, who's a band leader too. So it's a, uh, there, it's a, he's really great. So it's a, I basically, love, I got to handpick some favorite guys in Chicago. Right. And so uh, when, so that, is, now is the record out right now? Is it been released? Yeah, it's, it's streaming now. And then, um, I think the official CD release is September 16th, but it, it's available now. But I think the very official date, like right. I, um, yeah, it's being sent around. It's, it's, it's a hitting the radio already. I'm yeah. hearing, I got it. Which is really, really is there, one, is there one track that they're jumping on? That the who's the, the radio shop? Yeah, on? I've been trying to find that out. Well, our single was SOS because mm-hmm. it has the most sneaking lines and, and eight bars of flutus right up front. West, um, as far as playlists go from the streaming, um, these curated, curated playlists from Apple, I guess it's uh, I, I'm, I'm new to this world. Yeah, <laughs> we all are, even they are. Everybody, everybody, <laughs> good, point. <laughs> good point. But I think they've chosen SOS and West Coast Blues. Um, I think, um, oh, four on six. Oh, and Jingles. They've been playing Jingles on uh, our, our public radio here. In, uh, um, excuse me, W uh, B, uh, DCB here in, in Chicagoland area. Very cool. They, they you, you know, I was going to say something else that um, a lot of people that have done West, Re- West Records, you know, there's a lot of people that have done West Records. And they lean all over the active thing. I mean, yeah. you know, they just, just active, 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 which is, you know, that's obviously that's quintessential West. But, yeah. you know, um, West's single note line work was like the the genius. You know, that was like, you know, that's what we we're talking about earlier. What what the hell is he doing? <laughs> and and you're you're playing a, a mostly single single note line type stuff. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, we do octaves for. I have a few of those solis that I mentioned. Right. We took a couple mm-hmm. of West's octave solos and made it uh, into a soli, but. Yeah. I think you're. I, I. I mean, I really loved Wes's octave playing too. I don't. Oh, want to we, we all do. It, but we all do. But it's been done, and um, and and it's great to hear it because you know it, it's it's great stuff, of course. But I, I want to emphasize to listeners who are new to this that you know the the stuff that I just that Wes just blows me away on, other than on the obvious obvious of the actors, but his single note line stuff and his four note chord. So I mean, all that stuff is like crazy. I agree. And this record has got a boatload of it all over it. And so <laughs> yes. if you want to, if you want to, you know, check out Wes in a new way, man, I, I really think you need to, oh, the name of the record you. is. It's a, uh, it's the, it's the name of the record and the band name, Tim Fitzgerald's full house. There you go. I mean, how do you beat that? That's great. <laughs> well, listen, um, we only got another minute or so left. Is there something else you want to add? The book is where can they find the book? Sure. Um, well, the book, uh, it's it's certainly on Amazon and all those kind of places. Um, and the name of the book is Jazz Six Two Five. But the best place to get the book is uh, West Montgomery Music. Okay. Yeah, right. and that will and actually you can get the record there too. They have to, we have some pre pre released copies up there. West Montgomery Music dot com has got the book and also some pre released copies. Listen, man, I Seriously? wish you all the luck. Uh, <laughs> stay in touch Thank with you. us. Thanks for having you know. me. Bob Baker with Tim Fitzgerald. The new record is 
Tim Fitzgerald's Full House. All right. And you can pick it up anywhere. WestMontgomeryMusic.com. Really. West Thanks, man. Thank you. Sincerely. Right, Sincerely. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.